Fox News had some clown on to tell Americans <laughs> suffering with severe economic anxiety that they've got nothing to worry about. In fact, if they feel that they're poor, if they're actually broke or living in debt, have no fear, you're actually a lot more wealthy than you know. Let's watch. We are far more successful than European nations. And I think the writers at the New York Times and elsewhere, they don't realize that or they try to trick people into believing it's not true. We're also the kindest, most charitable state. We like to rip on ourselves all the time, but we give more money than many countries GDP. Absolutely, uh, an average American gives seven times as much as the average European. Now the European will say, hey, you know, we, we pay a, a lot in taxes, so that's why we don't give charity. Well, yeah, that's the problem. When you give charity, you give to your local community, you build, you build bonds with your neighbors and your church and your, you know, and local, but you know, right. you, you can't do that when government elbows out charity. And the thing is, it's not just the rich, it's the working class givers the same percentage as the upper class. Big salute to our country. Big salute to our country. And you know Thank what? You. Finally, finally, someone is holding that socialist rag, the New York Times, accountable mm -hmm. for their socialist reporting. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> what? The New York Times, you know, the New York Times, they're too friendly to the worker. Yeah. Come on. I mean, look, I have a bunch of data to, to rebut a lot of the garbage that was said there. But John. Yeah, I, he, like, you're gonna have to get in line because he's rebutting his own stuff. So supposedly, they can't give charity in Europe because their taxes is higher are higher. But according to him, we give seven times as much. But their taxes definitely aren't seven times as much. So clearly, you can manage being charitable and having taxes. And look, the whole thing is so is so nonsensical. The entire premise of Fox News, whenever a Democrat is in is in office, is the country is going to hell, everything's falling apart, the economy is terrible, the inflation is so high. No, apparently we're doing quite well around the world. Why don't they apply the argument that that one anonymous rando made to every other segment they do literally today? So the um, guest that was speaking to Brian Kilmeade is David Harsani. I'm not very familiar with him, but I, I do know that everything he said there was just full of lies, really. And what I question is whether he knows it and he's just intentionally lying to people watching Fox or if he's really that delusional. But regardless of what his intentions are, let's actually get to the heart of the matter. Um, number one, the United States being the most charitable. I don't know if they're specifically referring to charitable giving within the country or if they're talking about uh, us giving, you know, some of our uh, you know, money in the form of foreign aid, but it- They just, hate foreign aid, so it might well be that. If they're talking about foreign aid, let me just note, um, how charitable was the United States uh, when it went in and orchestrated a coup in Guatemala as soon as uh, US corporations uh, were concerned about, you know, agriculture being nationalized there and mm -hmm. corporations not being able to rape and pillage their land. I don't know, I'm just curious, how, how charitable was that? I mean, how charitable was the United States when it engaged in the recent coup in Bolivia? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, it goes on and look on and what on. we gave Afghanistan and Iraq. It, perfect example, but like, look, we do give foreign aid. But foreign aid isn't just given to countries in need. We give foreign aid strategically based on our own foreign policy interests. That's mm -hmm. it. Like I'm a realist when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. But going back to uh, the United States and where we really are as um, people who are just so privileged to live in, in such a uh, fruitful country, right? Well, it turns out that between 1995 and 2013, workers' share of national income in the United States dropped by eight percentage points, a steeper decline that in any other nation except for a steeper decline than in any other country except South Korea and Poland. In fact, if you take a look at this graph, because we're going to compare the United States and the European Union. So the top 1% versus bottom 50% national income shares in the US, we'll get to Europe in the next graph. But if you just take a look at this, you'll see what happened to wealth in this country mm. going back to the 1980s, right? So you see a massive increase in the amount of wealth accumulated by the top 1% and then the bottom 50%, you see that wealth consistently drop. Now, I'm sure that this trend will be far more pronounced in European in the European Union, especially because the Fox News guest said that we have a far better system here. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at European countries and how 
that. Oh, wow, that's hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. Oh, different. A little different. A little mm -hmm. different. You don't see that X, right? Mm -hmm. You see like you know two parallel lines, and okay, uh, well, maybe yeah. It's not that there's been no motion. There is some motion, but it is not an X. In fact, uh, you see that the uh, bottom 50%, I mean, like you see a little bit of an increase for the top 1% in Western Europe. But overall, um, there's some consistency there that would be kind of nice. Yes. Okay, so with that said, uh, let's look at poverty rates in OECD countries as of 2019. This was the latest data that was released by the OECD, um, February of this year to be exact. And here's what they found. Uh, in terms of the countries with the highest poverty, you're looking at the top Five. Costa Rica comes in at number one with 19.9% of its population living in poverty. Hungary is next with 17.9%. And then, oh wow, would you look at that? The United States comes in at third place hmm. with 17.8% of the US population living in poverty. Wonderful. But when we compare it to European countries, what's the difference? Oh, hmm. So let's take a look at Sweden, oh. just 8.9%. France, 8.5%, Norway, 8.4%, Netherlands, 8.3%, Belgium, 8.2%. Again, just a reminder, friendly reminder, United States, 17.9% of individuals living in poverty. What about jobs? Let's get to jobs. Decade old OECD research found that an unusually large amount of job turnover in the United States is due to firing and layoffs. Our country is so great, there's always all this innovation and job creation. No one ever gets mm -hmm. laid off, right? And uh, labor department figures show the rate of layoffs and firings actually hasn't changed significantly since the research was conducted. Uh, not only do Americans get fired more than other workers, we also get less warning. Every developed nation beside the United States and Mexico requires companies to give individual workers at least a week's notice before laying them off. I don't know, Europe seems pretty pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll get to some more uh, data in just a second. John. Yeah, look, even the week seems insulting, uh, but we don't do that. Generally, you're fired on the spot. And why? Why do we do that? Because you can't be trusted. Mm -hmm. If we were to fire you, you would obviously not work. You have no commitment to your work. You're just faking it for the money, you damn poor you. And you'd probably steal stuff or break stuff. You'd sabotage stuff. You are not a trustworthy human. That's why we need to boot you out and escort you out of the building. Um, it's a small thing, but it, but it's totally true. Uh, yeah, look, look, the whole argument is absolutely insane. It makes sense for them to make it. They have a uh, the senior writer of the National Review talking talking to a millionaire about how Americans have it too good and everything's too good. Simultaneously, America's not great and needs to be made great again. And conservative Americans are totally right to be filled with economic anxiety, but also stop it. Come on, everything is so good. Why are you complaining? That's not actually you know, what they say when they're running for office. But at a critical juncture where maybe a bill might have something that would help out working class Americans, suddenly everybody has it too good. It is like the number one, the number one or number two thing at Fox that needs to be fought, fought against. You can weigh it before or after, you know, white supremacy and replacement theory and all that is trying to convince an increasingly large percentage of the country to never, ever, ever think about money. Right. Your condition should never improve. It's honestly, you're getting a bit ahead of yourself to even think that it should someday. It should never improve for you. It should definitely improve for billionaires and millionaires. They are, after all, better than us. But the thing is, it's ridiculous when you say it like that, but it actually works. They get people worked up over some book in a school library. And for six months, no one in their audience thinks, hey, wait, why are my wages going down? Right. Why can't I find a job? I'm gonna get kicked out of my house and I can't afford health insurance. Shut up, think about think about Mr. Potato Head's penis. Just think about some culture war nonsense right, right, and it 100% right. works. Yeah, distraction, 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 distraction. All I'm asking, because I do know that we have some on the right who like to hate watch us, and welcome, I, I, I'm happy you're here. Uh, just consider the similarities that you share with your friends on the left, right? And I'm, I'm not talking about social issues, cultural issues. I get that there's a lot of disagreement there. But in terms of your material conditions, in terms of what you're experiencing with the precarity of your work, Right, and the way that you're treated at work. 
lot of similarities there, a lot of room for improvement if we fight together. Mm-hmm. With that said, um, for our European audience, if you are already insulted by what this guy had to say, don't worry, he's got more for you. Let's watch. It seems increasingly that progressives are taking over the Democratic Party, and this is the state that they envision. They envision Denmark, they envision France. The problem is, it's even worse in a way because they don't actually want people to pay for it. They just want, you know, either to create more debt or have just rich people pay for it, which is not how it works in Europe at all. You talk about the European culture is a culture of victimhood, and they say that meritocracy doesn't exist. Why are those two axioms important to tell the American story? Well, because we we excel at almost in every quantifiable way possible, we excel economically over Europeans. It's not because we're smarter or born better. It's because we have a system that that is about risk, that embraces risk taking, that is entrepreneurial, that rewards people for the things that they invent and do with money or with you know with riches and fame and all those things. In Europe, it's a much more docile and pliable population, and they are not, they are not they, they they embrace safety over risk. Most most often, and we don't do that here. You think Europeans are docile? Yeah. I, uh. Scandinavian countries don't have federal minimum wages because they have labor power. Labor unions negotiate on behalf of workers and secure some pretty sweet wages for those workers. Also, I, I just want to show you how docile uh, the French are. Uh, Let me remind you about the yellow vest movement. Mm -hmm. And this was when Emmanuel Macron wanted to implement regressive taxes that hurt workers. This is how docile they were in response. Let's watch. By the way, that was the 27th week of the protests, the Yellow Vest Movement. And I share that because the protesters were met with tremendous violence from law enforcement. You can see those videos all over the internet, water cannons. I mean, you had cops just raining terror on them, but they kept showing up until they got Macron to agree to repeal. Uh, the, the taxes that he had proposed uh, that would again hurt workers in the country. Um, so if anything, we've been far too docile here in the United States mm. where labor power has certainly waned um, in, in, you know, for it's been the case for many, many decades. Um, and it, is, it wasn't until fairly recently that people started like really rising up and, and organizing their workplace. You know, you had the Black Lives Matter movement, which yes, had to do with police violence, but there was also a socioeconomic component to that as well. And so I, I wanna see more of that. I, I, I mean, they're gonna call you uh, rioters or looters or whatever, but no, if, if, if you think the French are docile, mm-hmm. No, we're docile. Yeah, it wasn't until recently that we finally started speaking up and and demanding more. Yeah, yeah. We, look, I, you said you know you hope that some conservatives are watching. I hope some conservatives are watching. I know you hate me, I'm a commie or whatever. But um, but I, I look, I care about not only your life in our commentary on COVID in a way that nobody on Fox literally ever has. They cannot try to convince you any harder than they have that they don't care if you live or die. But also, I, I care about the economic situation of you and your family. And under the system that Fox News supports, and by the way, far too much of CNN, MSNBC, and the Democratic Party as well supports, things will never ever improve for you. Things might improve in the US. We'll see more like an advanced version of the chart that Anna showed. You'll see that X diverging even more, but it isn't because we value risk over safety or whatever. It's because we have bludgeoned our workers into submission and we don't expect any more than we have. And even when we fight for it, they've bought off our politicians so we can't get it. Safety over risk. When is the last time you saw a rich person go broke? It's like virtually impossible in America. You could go bankrupt multiple times and you'd be perfectly fine. We have safety and we have risk, very much depending on who you are. 
you can end up on the streets if you have like a $500 unexpected expense, but wealthy people are gonna be perfectly fine. Their businesses can go under, they'll get bailed out. You've seen it happen in the past. It's just that there's safety for a certain class of American and not for another. And you get to choose whether you get disarmed, whether you believe that critical race theory is literally the most important thing. You should spend the rest of your life fighting against that as you go deeper and deeper into debt, as retirement becomes more and more inconceivable. We do have a different path. They've tried to convince you that it's a scary one. Take a look around you right now. The present is pretty scary too. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.